Let's talk about another guy in the SEC. Let's talk about Torian York. True freshman last year, freshman All-American, freshman All-SEC. Now, here's what I will say about Torian York. He had the benefit of playing next to probably probably the best linebacker prospect in this year's draft class, the NFL draft class. Probably. There can be made an argument. You can talk about Jeremiah Trotter. You can talk about Junior Colson. You can talk about Peyton Wilson, who just ran a 4 4 4 at the combine. Ridiculous. Cedric Gray, I've heard people talk about. But Edgerin Cooper is way up there, right? And Torian York, uh, you know, he benefits from that. He also benefited from playing behind a very effective defensive line as well. Very effective. But- can I say this though? But what it, it took a couple of years. Obviously, we loved Edge Cooper last year, right? He was a baller. We were begging him to play more, right, under DJ Durkin's defense. But like he didn't how long really was I get begging freed that? up. But how long was I begging for that, by the way? How so many times did I say, long. why is Chris Russell playing? Edgerin Cooper should be playing every single snap. I was saying this last year. I've been saying this last two years. Oh, wait. I, he's grading out as a first round talent. Side surprise, note. surprise. But but also I will say like three in York, what he did not only to come in as a a, a three star, right? Almost on top a thousand player, right? 970th in the country, right? 160th in his state of Texas alone in the class of 2023, come in and, and earn a job right away at Mike Linebacker to call the defense. A lot of responsibilities on him. And he was that physical presence as an 18 year old, 19 year old kid to be able to free up a guy and a playmaker like Edge Cooper. Yes, I, I think he benefited from Edge Cooper, but also Edge Cooper benefited from Torrey York, and that's why I think he's on this list because you're bringing in a couple guys, right, who, who are going to play alongside him, have to replace Edge Cooper, that I think Torrey New York makes the rest of your front seven significantly better, and you can talk about that more, obviously, as an A&M guy. Yeah, and I, I would say, like, the linebacker production has been not – as effective as it should be with that defensive line that they've had in the last couple of years. Buddy Johnson was probably the last like really good linebacker that they had before Ezra and Cooper came along. But, you know, in between that, like Andrew Wright, Andrew White had his struggles. You had, or sorry, Andre White had his struggles. Um, Chris Russell, man, you know, like, I mean, the, the fact that, and, and I was listening to Tori in New York in an interview as well. And he talked about how, DJ Durkin trusted him very early on. Like he knew that he was going to be the starting linebacker basically like in the middle of summer. Like it was, it, it was pretty clear. Like he, he started taking first team reps and then DJ Durkin had come up to him and said that he had, he had earned the starting linebacker position over like a very experienced players like Chris Russell. And you were also competing with some younger guys like Damian Sanford it, there, there was a lot of competition to be had there, uh, but also there was a lot of opportunity, and Torrey York definitely made the best of it. So I'm not here to hate on Torrey York at all. I think he's a phenomenal player. AM fans were pissed when they missed out on Anthony Hill, and they got someone maybe not as explosive, but, man, just as productive. And, you know, right now, from the looks of it, just as good. Just as good. So this is one of those guys. This is probably the only – Player on this list that probably was less than a four star coming out of high school, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd have to go. I'd have to go back and look, but I believe everyone else was. So this is the lowest rated player that we have on this list, but he is a rising star because, man, he's going to be starting next year. He's already talked about a little bit how he likes playing next to Alex Howard. He likes some of these other guys. He's going to have to be the leader in that linebacker core. You know, uh, I believe Chris Russell's gone next year. Yep. Uh, yeah, he declared for the NFL draft, and so you're going to be playing. It's going to be Torrey New York. You got either Scooby Williams or uh, Alex Howard there, neither of whom are experienced. Um, no one in that linebacker room is experienced with this new defense that Mike Elko is bringing in, so Torrey New York is certainly going to have to be a leader, and he's going to have to produce. So we'll, we'll we'll see what he does, but I, I believe very heavily in Torrey New York. He's going to be probably – my pick for kind of a keystone player on that Texas m defense next year, like in this transition year, like who are those players that are going to have to step up big time in their roles to make sure that this defense gets it figured out. That's going to be Torrey York. And the thing I also like about Torrey York as a freshman, as a freshman, like he was calling defenses, by the way, it was not edge Cooper. It was Torrey York that was calling defenses. He was lining guys up. He was making adjustments. He was making calls and he did a really, really, really good job at times. Like a really good job. There were a couple games where he made some misadjustments, but uh, for the most part, AM's run defense was 
largely effective this year. It was their secondary that was quite the issue. And that's why I had to put him on this list here, or at least I had to ask you to be like, hey, is Torian York the guy for AM? Because you lose so many people in that front seven. McKinley Jackson off the NFL, right? You transfers out, you have no one. And McKinley Jackson, Chris Russell, and Ed Cooper, all guys, seniors, registered seniors, guys that have been there forever for AM, very proud players. I guess Chris Russell excluded, but you, you lose Fadil Diggs, you lose Nolan. Uh, wow. Walter Nolan. Walter Nolan. Thank you. Walter Nolan, LT Overton. You lose a lot of guys in that front seven who played productive snaps, and you're bringing in Nick Scorton, Cassius Howell, right? Rodas Johnson. You're bringing in other guys, and you're going to mesh a few new pieces. You got some young, rising guys coming up as second and third year guys, and, and he's going to be the guy that has to get everybody in alignment in a new defense, in a new system, right? With with five other new faces around him. And so, it, to me, three in York. And if I look everywhere on this team, on this roster, I really like the AM depth they have and, and what they can do with their schedule in year one in this new SEC. But also in terms of the depth they have for a team with a new coach is pretty impressive. Secondary, we'll get into there's eight to 10 different players that can play, whatever. But I, to me, it was like, get your front seven short up in the SEC and you're going to have a chance to win this year. And yeah, that's why I circled three in New York as, first of all, he was really good. Freshman All-American, started 12 games, 74 tackles, three sacks, forced fumble, right? But also in terms of like being that linchpin, like you mentioned, to get everyone in line and to be a productive defense and a successful year under Mike Elko, who you believe is going to have a good defense every year. But you also have to have players to execute that. And Torrey New York, to me, is that guy.